Okay. Like any piece of test equipment that measures voltage, this instrument has two leads. The voltage is always measured between two points. So for a voltmeter, you'd expect to see a red lead and a black lead. For an oscilloscope, things are set up a little bit different. They don't do things by color. What they do is they have the tip of the probe be the equivalent of the red test lead on a voltmeter. And then they have this clip right here, which is what they call the ground or the reference connection. So if I want to connect to a battery the way I'd connect a standard voltmeter, I would take this reference or ground connection, go to the negative side, that's where the black lead of a voltmeter would typically go. Then I'd take the probe, which is analogous to the red lead of a voltmeter, and attach it to the battery. And when I do that, you see the trace go up. And of course, I have the wrong number of volts per division, so there we go. There's my 9 volt battery. Get that zeroed again. Touching it to the 9 volt battery, and it goes up uh, one major division and four smaller divisions, which on the 5 volt per division scale is 9 volts. And that's how I use it. And as we saw before, if I take this and swap the polarity, it's going to measure downscale. Just like a digital voltmeter, if you connect the red side to the negative and the black side to the positive, it's going to read a negative voltage. That's how we show negative on a scope, by going down instead of going up. Well, there's a couple of things that are really, really important when you're dealing with an oscilloscope that's unlike a voltmeter. This reference clip, this ground clip right here, goes to the coaxial cable, which, like all coaxial cables, has a center conductor and an outside braid. Well, that outside braid is where the reference clip goes. The center conductor is where the tip of the probe goes. These both lead back right here to the front panel of the scope. And here, at the front panel of the scope, you'll see this is a typical quarter-turn BNC-style connector. You can even see the probe connections right there. That's the center connector and then the shield of the coaxial cable is that part right there. So this plugs in right into the scope. So that little pin, or that receptacle I should say, where this pin fits into is where the tip of the probe couples to. So the tip goes right to that center part. The outside shell, of course, is your ground or reference clip. Here's the problem. That outside shell is connected to the metal frame of the oscilloscope. The metal frame of the oscilloscope is connected to the third prong on our power plug. So what that means is you have a voltmeter here, once this is plugged back in, you have a voltmeter where the black lead or the reference lead is physically tied to the earth safety ground of your power system. That can be a major, major problem because you take these two as though they're just voltmeter leads. Oh, I want to measure 480 and you go across it. You've just taken one of your conductors straight to ground through a very small wire that you're holding. That's not a good thing to do. Uh, so here's something else to keep in mind that always gets students in trouble. Let's say that I want to use two channels of the oscilloscope at the same time, which is a very common thing. I may want to compare two waveforms and look for phase shifts, for example. Well, I've got the same problem here. This channel, channel two, the ground connection of it, the reference connection, is physically tied to the metal frame of the scope, which is physically connected to the Earth's safety ground, which means I have the same uh, ground problem there. In fact, they even try to remind you of the helpful ground symbol there, but it's very easy to overlook. Yeah. So we have the same potential safety problem here, taking a probe that is plugged into channel two, and then trying to measure a voltage difference in a non-grounded system. I will create a ground in that system the moment I connect this lead, uh, sometimes with catastrophic results. But here's the other problem that arises, and it's a little bit trickier to see. If I'm measuring two voltage sources, two signals at the same time, that means the common lead, the black lead of both those signals, are electrically tied together. So even if I don't have an earth ground safety type problem, I do have the potential problem of automatically making a short in my circuit by connecting the black lead of one probe in a different spot than the black lead of the other probe. So if I take these two probes and go out to a circuit and I connect their black leads, their reference leads in different points of that circuit, I will have made a jumper connection between those two points. Okay. That can short things out, even if it's not a safety problem, it can cause your circuit to go haywire. So it's very, very common for people using oscilloscopes to do this. They will take one probe, typically on channel one, and they will tie this wherever they know ground is going to be in the circuit. Then they take the other probe over here 
and when they attach that to their second channel, what they will do is not even connect the ground lead. In fact, in some cases, they'll take the ground wire completely off so they can't make that mistake. Okay. And now they can only use the tip of that probe because you're really, you're forced into a situation where you only have one ground or reference on the oscilloscope. So, so if you you're checking well two phases it. of a three-phase system, that's exactly what you want to do right here. Yeah, and you better be sure this is going to the center point the y connect of the Y connection or the right. ground of those two phases. So. In fact, there are some better ways to do that we'll talk about later. You can use isolation transformers to get away from the whole ground problem. Okay. Now, one trick I've seen technicians do that I do not recommend, but it's worth talking about just because of the inherent safety hazards. I have seen technicians use an oscilloscope trying to make re uh, voltage measurements on a system that was ungrounded, a high voltage system that was ungrounded. And they realized this would pose a problem. So what they did is they got an isolation transformer and they plugged the oscilloscope into that so that they disabled the safety ground on the chassis of the oscilloscope. Then they put on a pair of rubber gloves and they would manipulate the controls on the scope. Yeah. I do not recommend that unless you have a death wish. Uh, no. It's, yeah. <laughs> and not to mention, but if you set that oscilloscope now on a metal table that happens to be grounded, you still haven't taken care of the ground problem. So it's really a, a bad situation. There are other ways to handle it. And one of those other ways is if you're measuring on an AC system, you can use isolation transformers on each one of the channels to isolate those channels independently from ground. Another uh, higher cost solution is to get a much more expensive oscilloscope that has isolated inputs. You can buy those. And for the application, they can't be beat. Uh, another way to do it, and this is actually probably the most economical, is to get yourself a battery-powered scope meter, kind of like the Fluke scope meter series. Because they're battery powered, they have no connection. It's a uh, and it's a plastic case, so you can take that and hook up to whatever system you want with impunity. You only have to watch out in that case with the battery powered scopes, is you still have a common connection ground between channel one and channel two. So you've got to watch out for that. But at least you've gotten away from the earth ground problem okay. that we see here. That's a very important aspect of oscilloscope use. Go ahead and stop the video.